my mic on. So we're, we're, we're getting off to a good start. It's good to see you. Appreciate you coming out and, and braving the cold tonight. It's good to be together. We're going to begin singing 199. 199. Hark, the herald angels sing. This is our last Sunday to be able to sing Christmas carols, I guess. And uh, so we'll get a few more in tonight and uh, hope you'll enjoy them. 199, let's stand together as we sing.
read this to you. It's called A Year of Time. And it's by a fellow named Stephen Cloud. But he said, Though even thinking on the subject of time may prove discomforting, it is not a bad idea, especially at the beginning of a new year. As we look into 2018, we look at a block of time. We see 12 months, 52 weeks, 365 days, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes, 31,536,000 seconds. And all is a gift from God. We have done nothing to deserve it, earn it, or purchase it. Like the air we breathe, time comes to us as a part of life. The gift of time is not ours alone. It is given equally to each person. Rich and poor, educated and ignorant, strong and weak, every man, woman, and child has the same 24 hours every day. Another important thing about time is that you cannot stop it. There is no way to slow it down turn it off, or adjust it. Time marches on. And you cannot bring back time. Once it is gone, it is gone. Yesterday is lost forever. If yesterday is lost, tomorrow is uncertain. We may look ahead at a full year's block of time, but we really have no guarantee that we will experience any of it. Obviously, time is one of our most precious possessions. We can waste it. We can worry over it. We can spend it on ourselves. Or, as good stewards, we can invest it in the kingdom of God. The new year is full of time. As the seconds tick away, will you be tossing time out the window or will you make every minute count? I think it's good to think about that and, and be challenged with that. I came across uh, some good quotes concerning the new year I thought you might be interested in. This one's from Alexander McLaren, preacher uh, of years gone by and great commentator. He said, being in Christ... It is safe to forget the past. It is possible to be sure of the future. And it is possible to be diligent in the present. Then one of my favorite commentators is a, uh, was a man named Philip Brooks. He was a great preacher, great writer. Um, if you ever get a chance to study behind him and get his commentaries, he's amazing. He said this, the only way to get rid of your past is to make a future out of it. I like that. You think about that. The only way to get rid of your past is to make a future out of it. And then Jack Howell said this, what we do today is more important than what we plan to do in the future. Small deeds done are better than great deeds planned. And then some of you know Warren Wearsby, again, preacher and commentator. He said, nothing paralyzes our lives like the attitude that things can never change. We need to remind ourselves that God can change things. Outlook determines outcome. If we see only the problems, we'll be defeated. But if we see the possibilities in the problems... We can have victory. He uh, has a lot of wise and witty sayings. One of the things he always said was, the bumps are what you climb on. There's a lot of bumps along the road of life, but he said, you know, the bumps are what you climb on. And uh, it's all a matter of our perspective, isn't it? And then Jim Elliott, great uh, pioneer missionary, he said this, wherever you are, be all 
there. <laughs> Live to the hilt every situation you believe to be the will of God. And then he said this, God always gives his best to those who leave the choice with him. I like that. And then Charles Finney, he was, again, a great preacher. He said, a revival is nothing else than a new beginning of obedience to God. Think about that. We Think about going in the new year. And uh, we talked about this morning wanting to be more productive and more fruitful in the new year. That's just another way of saying we want revival in our hearts and our lives and, and uh, uh, he hit the nail on the head. Revival is really just a renewed obedience to the Lord, a, a, a renewed obedience to his word. And this one is called a New Year's poem for Christ, Christians. Instead of making a New Year's resolution, consider committing to a biblical solution. Your promises are easily broken, empty words, though earnestly spoken. But God's word transforms the soul by His Spirit making you whole. As you spend time alone with Him, He will change you from within. But I really like that. Instead of making a New Year's resolution, consider committing to a biblical solution. And then one more, and this is called Just One Request. Dear Master, for this coming year, just one request I bring. I do not pray for happiness or any earthly thing. I do not ask to understand the way Thou leadest me. But this I ask, teach me to do the thing that pleaseth Thee. I want to know thy guiding voice, to walk with thee each day. Dear Master, make me swift to hear and ready to obey. And thus the year I now begin, a happy year will be, if I am seeking just to do the thing that pleaseth thee. Let's continue singing 219. 219, and we'll make this our offertory hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night, we'll sing the first and the last verse together. You can remain seated as we sing. one good singing.
this a little while back in one of uh, one of the devotionals that I read, and I uh, thought it was just incredible. And uh, so I saved it and later on printed it off, and I thought it would be a great time to share it. But it's called Statement of Christ's Purpose. John chapter 13 and verse 15 says, For I have given that ye should do as I have done to you. I've given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Schools, businesses, and institutions are all well advised to develop and live by statement of purpose if they are to be successful. Evaluated each activity by its effectiveness in fulfilling that as Christians, we should also have a well-defined purpose. Each individual's specific purpose will vary somewhat depending on that person's giftedness, background, and circumstances. But since Christ is our example, each Christian's statement of purpose should reflect his priorities and values. In many ways, Mark's gospel provides the most vivid and explicit insight into the work of Jesus. And in this book, we see Jesus often repeating his statement of purpose. Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, Repent ye and believe the gospel. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Jesus Christ had come with the specific purpose of saving the lost, and everything he did pointed to that end. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mark chapter 2 and verse 17. Christ not only preached to sinners, but he trained and sent out his followers to see that his mission was effectively carried out even after he was gone. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth. And they went out and preached that men should repent. That's chapter 6, verses 7 and 12. Regarding his approaching death, he explained, The Son of Man came to give his life a ransom for many. Chapter 10, verse 45. As he left them, he commanded, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Our priorities should be the same as his. If everything we do points toward this end, his mission will thereby be accomplished. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. Chapter 8 and verse 35. Statement of Christ's purpose. I want you to think about that. And then shortly after that, in reading another, a, a different devotional, and this one's short, but here's what it says. The word of God spreads like ripples on a pond where from a single center each wave touches the next, spreading wider and farther. The gospel still spreads this way today. You don't have to change the world single-handedly. It is enough just to be part of the wave, touching those around you who in turn will touch others until all have felt the movement. Don't ever feel that your part or unimportant. That is a good challenge for us to think about Christ's statement of purpose and how do we fit in with that? Uh, do we have a statement of purpose? Well, it's good to stop and think as we contemplate a new year. Why am I here? And what am I supposed to be doing? And why has the Lord saved what does he want me to do? And it's good to stop, think, reflect on these things. And am I doing what the Lord saved me to do? Am I being a part of fulfilling his statement of purpose and reaching others with
with the gospel. We can't reach them all single-handedly, but we can be part of the way that touches the other, has that rippling effect. We can do our part. We can uh, touch the lives of those around us. So I want you to think about that. 227 as we continue to sing. 227. Who is he in yonder stall? Why don't we stand together one last time and sing this tonight? I have several things here, so I can keep going as long as we need to, but I mentioned this morning that if you had a verse that you would like to share uh, with us that might be an encouragement to us, might be a good verse for us to consider as we stand on the threshold of a new year, and maybe you have a testimony you'd like to share to encourage us as well. Um, I'd like to give you the opportunity to do so. So anyone like that, uh, whether you have a verse you want to share with us or a testimony or both or a word of encouragement, maybe the Lord has taught you something this year that you want to 
share with us to encourage us and help us along the way. It's interesting in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. If we backed up one verse to verse 24, it, it tells us to consider one another and to provoke one another to love and to good works. And so when we come together at times we have opportunities to do that, to consider each other and to encourage each other concerning love and good works and to exhort one another. And uh, so from time to time we have opportunities to, to do that. Anyone with a verse to share or a word you want to share tonight? It'd be an encouragement to us as we go into this new year. Yes, Amy. That's good. Thank you. We don't know about tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow. And uh, what, a, what a blessing. thought about that song this week and uh, the message I thought I was preaching this morning. <laughs> Someone else want to share a, a verse or a word of encouragement? Yes, Brother Mike. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Amen. What was the verse you shared with me this morning? Job 38? Yeah, look that one up for us. And, and uh, that, was a, that was a good uh, encouragement. I went home thinking about that verse this morning. And uh, it really was the, the Lord was being very direct with Job and basically told him to get moving. And I, I like that a lot. You got it there? Amen. And that's good. That's good. And I said to Brother Mike, I said, boy, can you imagine the Lord speaking to you that way? It'd be like, Yes, Lord. <laughs> Gird up your loins like a man. Let's, let's get with it here. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Someone else? Verse or. Yes, Janice. Amen. 
Mm. Amen. Amen. I love that. That's good. Amen. So, precious promises, verses that, that see us through a lot of, of trying times in life. Uh, the Word of God. Amen. Someone else, you have a, a verse or a word of testimony or both, word of exhortation, something the Lord's taught you that you want to share. Yes, Brother Jimmy. Amen. That's a, it's a wonderful truth. I've, I've often been reminded that if just 1% of our salvation depended on us, we'd be hopelessly lost. And I've often said, too, I, I wouldn't trust the best 15 minutes of my life to get me to heaven. The best 15 minutes. And uh, I'm glad we're complete in Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good. Someone else, you want to share a verse or a word of encouragement with us tonight?
I had turned to Isaiah 41 because I was going to share those verses with you if she didn't. She actually shared them with me earlier in the year, and uh, I just thought, wow, that... It's just so incredible, especially, well, all of it, but especially in verse 13 where it says, I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. It's just amazing to me that the, to, to think of that truth, the Lord would hold our hand. And then as a result, he says, fear not. I mean, if the Lord's holding our hand, there's nothing to fear. He says, fear not, I will help thee. And if the Lord's helping us, there's no reason to fear. Well, what a, what a beautiful picture that is and truth that is of the Lord holding our hand and uh, helping us. Thank you. Anyone else? While you think about it, I'll read this to you. It's uh, Matthew Henry, one of uh, the greatest commentators Ever he, he wrote this, and uh, I thought it was, it was great to think about for the new year. In fact, he called it a New Year's resolution. And um, it's from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Firmly believing that my times are in God's hand, I here submit myself and all my affairs for the ensuing year to the wise and gracious disposal of my God. Whether God appoint for me health or sickness, peace or trouble, comforts or crosses, life or death, His holy will be done. All my time, strength, and service I devote to the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. My studies and all my ministerial labors and even my common actions. It is my earnest expectation, hope, and desire, my constant aim and endeavor that Jesus Christ may be magnified in my body. In everything wherein I have to do with God, my entire dependence is upon Jesus Christ for strength and righteousness. And whatever I do in word or deed, I desire to do all in His name to make Him my Alpha and Omega. I have all by Him and I would use all for Him. If this should prove a year of affliction, a sorrowful year upon my account, I will fetch all my supports and comforts from the Lord Jesus and stay myself upon Him, His everlasting consolations and the good hope I have in Him through grace. And if it should be my dying year, my times are in His hand. And with a humble reliance upon his mediation, I would venture into another world looking for the blessed hope. Dying as well as living, Jesus Christ will, I trust, be gain and advantage to me. Oh, that the grace of God may be sufficient for me to keep in me always a humble sense of my own unworthiness, weakness, folly, and infirmity, together with a humble dependence upon the Lord Jesus Christ for both righteousness and strength. That's, a, that's quite a New Year's resolution, isn't it? Um, I love that. <laughs> I have all by Him and would use all for Him. Amen. Someone else, uh, maybe you have a word of encouragement, or you want to share a verse of scripture tonight. I want to read to you 
by way of exhortation tonight as we think about our church, as we think about our individual uh, lives, but also as we think about uh, ourselves collectively as brothers and sisters in Christ, corporately as a uh, church body, a local church body, I want to remind you of two articles, and uh, I think we should all be reminded of them. Uh, I'm not going to preach through them as I've done in the past, but I just want to remind you of them, and that's Articles 2 and 3 of our church constitution. Article 2 is the object. In other words, when our church was established, founded 35 years ago, they established that there were certain objectives for establishing Chad's Ford Baptist Church right here in this place. And let me read those to you because uh, these remain our objectives. And uh, I think we should uh, strengthen our resolve to meet them. The object of this congregational church is the edification of Christians through the teaching of God's Word. I find it interesting that that's first on the list. The edification of Christians through the teaching of God's Word and to be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ in this area for the salvation of souls and the worldwide proclamation of God's saving grace expressed in the shed blood and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary the promotion of godly worship and the defense of the faith once delivered until he comes. The teaching of God's word, a witness for Jesus Christ in this area, speaking of local outreach. And then it says the worldwide proclamation. That's through worldwide missions. And then it says the promotion of godly worship and the defense of the faith once delivered until he comes to stay true to the word of God not to ever compromise not to become seeker friendly but to always be savior sensitive and to make sure that our worship is in line with the character and the truth of God so those are the stated objectives uh, 35 years ago, and I think each of us would agree and say amen, those are still the objectives today. And I wanted to read that to you because I want you to think about that. Uh, think about these objectives and, and how can we uh, do better? Uh, where can we implement uh, more ministry in these areas? And so I challenge you to think about that as I think about it and contemplate these things as we enter into uh, a new year of ministry. So that's Article 2, the object. And then Article 3 is our church covenant. And I think, again, this is something we should um, oft be reminded of. And it says, Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior... And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Many members, yet one body. We pledge, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. I want you to think about these things. To walk together in Christian love. To strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort. To promote its prosperity and spirituality. To sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines. To give it a sacred preeminence over all institutions of human origin. 
to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also <clears throat> will endeavor to maintain family and secret devotion whenever possible, to educate our children in the Word of God, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further pledge to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover pledge that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. I think it's good that we are all reminded of the object and then the covenant of the ministry here, of our church here. There's a lot in there. And uh, at times I've taken just two services just to go through all of those things. All of those things are scriptural. Um, many hours were put into uh, thinking through those things. And, and the object is so that we'll have unity and harmony and a sweet fellowship and be able to carry out really the, uh, the object of the church. And uh, so I thought it'd be good that we're reminded of those things uh, this evening. Anyone else, we're going to have uh, a, a, just a brief season of prayer tonight as we think about entering in the new year. Uh, but anyone else with a verse of scripture or a word of testimony, I don't want to miss anybody. Brother Dave? Amen. Amen. It is indeed. Let's press toward. Let's go forward and uh, press toward that mark. Press toward the prize. Amen. It's good. So many folks have been hindered and hampered by ghosts of guilt, ghosts of the past. And um, Paul said, no, nope, we're forgetting those things. And uh, they're under the blood of Christ, and we're moving forward. We're pressing forward. That's good. Good, good uh, verses for the new year. Anyone else? Yes, Lynn.
That's good. I'm glad he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm glad he's not uh, finished with us. <laughs> there was a song years ago, He's Still Working on Me. So <laughs> uh, we could say we're a piece of work, but I'd rather say we're a work in progress. <laughs> That's good, thank you. Anyone else? I don't want to keep you long tonight. We, we're just about out of time. But one of the things I did want to do tonight was just have a, a brief season of prayer for a, a few things here. And uh, uh, first of all, I, I want us to pray especially and specifically for the Hogue family. And uh, you know the situation there and with, with Ruth Ann and what they're going through. And, and um, you know, we read just a moment ago uh, that covenant said we'd pray for one another, didn't, didn't it? We'll pray for one another. Brother Lenny, would you just uh, stand and have a, a special word of prayer for the Hogue family? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I also want to have a special word of prayer for our church as we go into the new year that uh, as we talked about this morning, it would have a productive year and a very fruitful year and uh, that we would uh, all experience spiritual growth, uh, pray for our services and our Sunday school and again, mainly that it would be a, a year of spiritual growth for us this year. Brother Ron, would you, would you stand and pray to that effect, please? <clears throat> 